Okay. So just doing a little bit of some leash work and some, some recall practice. Try not the, the Christmas camera. She's really good about sticking close and checking in um, in a normal neighborhood setting. What she really needs is work when she's really excited for it, a new environment, like a social setting. We'll go over that a little bit later as well. Good girl. Hi. So the, the leash is unlocked, just holding it. I have the ultrasonic here to, to get her attention when we need it. She gets a little bit further out uh, and then can also lock if necessary. She starts wandering into the street or running after a pup or something. It's usually one of the few times when you know, she'll kind of lose focus is when she either sees another person or another dog. So, it's usually the times when we'll need to practice that recall or the follow me. It's a good problem to have. It's mostly just because she's very friendly. She wants to say hello. She seemed a little unsure of the kids at the bus stop the other day. Almost like she was going to kind of roll over on her belly when she's kind of overwhelmed and submit, so she's not going to react negative to, negatively to them, but she definitely can use a little more exposure to children in general. Hi, how you doing? Good girl. Good girl. Very good. Right. She did a good job there, seeing somebody. Then just redirect it back to me. That was good. Still keeping relatively close and tight. So this would still be considered like a normal leash length in. Trying to reduce her amount of work for her to kind of get acclimated to being back home and outside of boot camp life. Also just to see if I uh, touch the, um, the leash there a little bit. Didn't want her to get too far into somebody else's house. But um, just to get her used to, here we'll do the recall now. Yes, good girl, good job. All right, I'm out of hand, here we go. Here you go, good girl, good job. Um, but yeah, just to try to get her acclimated to more of a home life again. It's like a muffin wrapper or something. But that was good. Use the ultrasonic because it's good for um, indoor environments. So especially with her, you know, if she gets really excited because she sees a dog or a person. She's about to jump up. You can just call her name or press the button to let her know, and that really helps to kind of snap her out of that energized fixation moment, and then just have her come back to you for for a sit, or just hold the leash tighter so she doesn't jump up on somebody. She's really good about responding. So she's pretty much at the end of the leash there, kind of pulling a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and use it now. Oh, after she pees. Good girl. Good pee pee. Good girl. Gonna use her name first. Marnie, come. Good. So I didn't even need to use my good girl. That's also one of the few times when she'll pee is when she's just trying to get to somewhere to pee and she's towards the end of the leash. That's why I like to try to wait 
before like immediately trying to call back in so that way we don't you know disrupt the potty process that she has going girl so spin a little bit further out and go ahead and press this down good girl she comes back automatically give her a little good girl good job and we go back usually we'll do kind of two or three different sessions like one will be outside of like the normal training sessions usually one will be kind of more like this where there's less distractions, um, kind of mid-morning, people at work, and then usually one in the evening when there's either more dogs around in the neighborhood or, you know, at a social place. Yes, good girl, very good. So she's just getting a little far there, so just use the ultrasonic. And it's good to go back and forth because you know, we want her to still be conditioned to just responding to her name in case we don't have something there. And for the most part, she's pretty good about sticking close. Good girl. going into the yard again. Marnie! Yes, good girl. So that time, just like I said, just using her name. Girl. For the most part, some of the areas are kind of um, open public area, and sometimes it bleeds into residential area pretty quickly, so it's good to try to keep her close and get her to, to potty and the more public places whenever possible. It's actually a shame because one of her favorite areas to do MP is um, in a in a yard where of course somebody has one of those signs up that they would like to not have dogs go in their yard. So we kind of are like right on the edge of that property line and she really wants to go in but she'll usually go to the bathroom right outside of it or next to it. Okay. She's getting a little far now, so we'll practice again with the uh, ultrasonic. Try to get it both in frame here. Yes, good girl. Good job. She is wicked smart. Good girl. She definitely likes her treats. It makes everything a little bit easier. Good girl. It's good to always give her that praise when she does respond right away. And then, you know, of course, treats are optional later on. I'm only doing it right now pretty often because I really want to condition a behavior. But maybe like a couple weeks in or a couple months in, after she really gets used to everything, then you can start kind of weaning things off of the treats. Maybe giving her a treat every other time she comes back or every third time, third to fifth time, fifth to tenth time. You know, just kind of build it in there. It's an easy way to kind of wean them off of it. And then another thing that I'll do to help wean dogs off of getting treats or rewards is um, I'll have them do a couple different tasks first and then they get a treat. So instead of her coming to me and getting a treat, having her come to me, sit, follow me for a little bit, sit again, and then she gets a reward, right? So she's accomplishing multiple tasks for one single reward and sustaining focus too. Uh, that's really good ways of kind of getting them to, you know, still feel rewarded, especially with labs, since they love treats. But getting them used to listening to you and following, you know, your instructions and requests for that reward at the end. Some pups just like doing it because they like doing the, the activities that we give them. And some pups, it can be, can be harder. So just try to kind of gauge by the situation. Like uh, if she really wanted to, oh, we got cars coming. Marnie, come. Good girl. Good girl. 
So right there, right? So she was interested in, in a smell or something that was in the middle of the street. Instead of practicing with the button, just kind of used her name and had her come by. And also, you know, there's really no time right now to reward because yeah, she instantly kind of got into something else with her nose. She's pretty normal for dogs. So she either checks back on in on her own as I'm moving further away, or if I get far enough away and I want to use the, the ultrasonic to get her attention, then we'll do that and then we'll reward her. So really pulling her away from something that she was interested in is a really good time to reward her. You know, so that way we're not just pulling away from her from something for nothing. Um, she kind of feels like an even trade for it. Like, hey, thanks for listening. I know you wanted to check out that person or that smell, you know. So here is here is a little something as a token of my appreciation. And yeah, outside of pets and praise. So long as you make them feel rewarded is the main thing. Because some dogs will be good with just doing it because they want to be with you. And some dogs, depending on what it is, would always appreciate an additional reward because it was something that they really were interested in and had to pull themselves from for you. So you just kind of take that as a case-to-case -case basis there. Good girl. So she's doing a really good job of uh, sticking close again. Following her nose a little bit. Especially with Marnie. Um, want to try to get, <laughs> get her used to her, her environment a little bit. Oh, come here, girl. Good, come. It's okay. I'm oh, yeah. You want to say hi? Baby. No jumping. Puppy, huh? Yeah, good girl. Yeah, we had one like this too. Oh, 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 I dropped. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Oh, good it's girl. Okay, no, <laughs> there we go. Much better. Good girl. <laughs> she's she's working on it. How old is she? Nine months. Oh, she's still a baby. Yeah. We had good girl. Until she was there you 14. go. Good girl. There you go. Yeah, good girl. That's dog. awesome. Enjoy. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. Good girl. Oh, I think she might uh, she might join your walk here. <laughs> Marnie. Yes, good listen. Come here. Good girl. Hi. You need a little bit of help, but you're not too bad. There you go. Good girl. Good. Yeah. And that's pretty much about how it goes down in um, like those public environments, like at the pet store or at the Lowe's when you know, she gets excited. Yeah. Um, really need to kind of help micromanage her a little bit more to get her from from jumping up. She knows not to, but it's sometimes just the excitement that gets to her. So really trying to interrupt that excitement a little bit so that way she has time to compose herself and know to not jump up. So, oh, I was going to do it, but then she kind of turned around. Good girl. Good girl. Hi. And then once again, if she just, just kind of checks back in on her own. Good girl, up here. Oh, are you going to give paw? I don't, <laughs> I don't have any hands to get, to take the high five, but thank you, though. Um, yeah, she was really good with that. We transitioned the, the touch into the button. So, you know, if she, if she asked her to touch or give you paw um, for the treat, you sit down, and she's really good with that as well. Okay, so she's going a little bit further away, so we'll practice this again. Yes, good girl. Good job. Good. And all this is is just classical conditioning, you know. She hears the ultrasonic, she knows to come back for a reward. And this is really good for, like I said, those environments where you, you know, you don't want to yell her name or blow a whistle or anything like that. Um, Maybe you're on a phone call, she gets excited, and she doesn't really bark out the window at things, but some of the other pups do, and so that's when we would use a device like this. If you're on a call, the last thing you want to do is, you know, put them on hold just so that way you can yell at the dogs to be quiet or come to you. So what you do is just kind of press the button, 
and they come over and then I just give them usually like a chew treat or something like that that will kind of keep them occupied for an extended period of time and by that time the event or whatever was going on outside has passed and they're nice and quiet all I had to do is just kind of reach over and press a button so it, it definitely has its use cases She's really good, like I said, about just kind of sticking nearby anyway, so long as there isn't a dog or a person of interest coming by. It's usually when you'll need to get her attention. Now we're just gonna practice with her name. Marnie. Good girl, good listen. Good girl. Oh, thank you, okay, thank you. I know. Maybe got her too used to using her paws. <laughs> Good girl. And we'll gonna take a couple laps around because the weather is actually really nice out today. Take advantage of that a little bit. But um, if anything eventful, like another person comes by or we run into a pup, I'll start recording again. If not, this is pretty much what the rest of the session will be looking like. You know, we'll press it this time. So she's into something now. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Barney, sit. Good sit, there you go. Good girl, good job. Good girl. 